All right, Pythagorean theorem essentially is a way that it only works in right triangles. And just to kind of help you with the labels, A, I'll underline them here, and B are called legs. I'll do it on the inside here. Those are legs of a right triangle. And then C is what's called the hypotenuse. Okay. So if we have, uh, um, and the theorem basically goes like this. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So the square of your two legs, the sum of the squares of your two legs, is always equal to the square of your hypotenuse. Um, and we're going to use this formula and use this to death. You will have this thing memorized, I guarantee you, by April and maybe sooner. So a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So let's apply this. Whoops, I hit the wrong button. So let's apply this thing. So let's go to the next page here. I got a triangle already situated. Whoop, there it was. And uh, I left it in the same orientation to be kind of nice. And so let's say this side was three inches and this side was, uh, let's not use five, let's use four inches. And we want to find this hypotenuse, which for the sake of our problem, we'll call C. Okay, um, so using Pythagorean theorem, you know, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. A and b are our legs. So see if you can determine which one are the legs and which one's the hypotenuse in this case. Well, we already labeled the hypotenuse. So the legs have to be 3 and 4. They're always the one by the 90 degree angle. And that'll be the trickiest part for you in this, is figuring out which is which. So a squared and b squared, it doesn't matter which one you pick for a and b. So I'm going to pick... Uh, I'll pick this one for A as A and this one as B. C is the only one that matters. C has to be the hypotenuse, but A and B can be either leg. So A squared would be 4 squared plus 3 squared is equal to C squared. Then you just solve it like we've been doing. So 4 squared is 16 plus 3 squared is 9. And 16 plus 9 is 25. And we want to find the value of C. So you would root both sides. And C is equal to 5. Now, before we were doing plus or minus 5. But in this case, um, the, it's a length, which is a scalar multiple. So we only use the positive side. And so C is 5. And actually, this is one of the few times when you have a 3, 4. It's called a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. It's kind of special. Um, if you have a triangle, 1, 2, and 3 doesn't work. You know, one, we've already talked about that triangle inequality. One, two, three doesn't even make a triangle. So a little bit of trivia for you in case you remember that situation. Next problem. Here's another example. So here I've got the triangle upside down. Notice where the right angles are. So hopefully you know where the legs are located. So well, let's say our legs are, and we know our legs are here and here. And our hypotenuse is here. Okay. Um, so let's say this time they gave us a hypotenuse of 13 and they gave one of our legs, um, let's say they gave it as 9 and we want to find the other leg and we'll call it x. So Pythagorean theorem again, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The only one that matters is the c squared. It has to be the hypotenuse so we'd have 13 squared there. Then the x squared, you can let either one of these be a and b. So if you let this be a and this be b, we're ready to go. So x squared plus 9 squared is equal to 13 squared. So x squared plus 81 is equal to 169. Then it's a matter of just solving this equation. So minus the 81. And so that's 8. Uh, that's 0, 16, that'd be 88 equals x squared. And then you take the root of both of those. So square root, square root, 
So x is equal to, now again, get used to breaking these things down. I know it's a pain in the butt, but this would be 8 and 11, and then 4 and 2, and then 2 and 2. So you've got a pair of 2's with a 2 and 11 left over. So that would be 2 square root of 22. And again, we only use the positive answer because we're dealing with an actual length. You know, and if you wanted to, if that does, if 2 root 22 obviously doesn't probably make a lot of sense to you as a number, get your calculator out and do 2 times root 22. You're going to get um, just a little bit more than 9 because the square root of 81 is 9, and so the square root of 88 is bigger. So it's going to be 9 point something, something irrational. So let's try one more. Whoops, not that. Let's try um, uh, one more problem. And this time what you should do is uh, pause the video and I'm going to give this as uh, uh, 12 and this side here as 3 and we're going to find this side. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can figure out the answer to this thing. So okay, now that you're back, Pythagorean theorem would be 3 squared plus x squared equals 12 squared. Now, it doesn't matter which of these two came first as long as you have the 12 squared in the right spot. So we'd have then 9 plus x squared equals 144. Take 144 minus 9 and x squared is equal to um, 135 maybe? Uh, yep. Yep, that's right. And then you would root that, square root of 135, and maybe I got lucky and got a, well, you know it's not prime, because it can divide out by 5. And so that would be 27. And then that's 9 and 3, and that's 3 and 3. So we do have a pair. So a pair of 3's goes out front with a 5 and a 3 left over, which is 15. And so there is the length of our missing side. And again, if you're, you know, 135, um, 12 squared is 144, and 11 squared is 121, so it's a number just under 12. And if you look at, uh, if you look at it, that, that makes total sense. So this one's 3 here, so this one's 11 point something. And uh, so you always want to kind of make sure your answers make sense. And so that's Pythagorean Theorem. Um, hope this helps you. Uh, again, if it doesn't, make sure you ask questions. Come find me go, or go find somebody who knows how to do this. Lots of people know how to do this, especially in my classroom. So just go ask somebody. Good luck and see you later.